My name is Saint Simon and I welcome you back to the series where we analyze introverted leadership on the case example of Thomas Shelby and the Peaky Blinders series. Introverted leadership is all about reading others and thinking multiple steps ahead. It's a mix of chess and poker. Opening shot. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you say? Your sister and Freddie got back this morning. Tommy has eyes and ears everywhere. Similar to the last episode, introverted leadership is all about collecting information to think multiple steps ahead. Tommy's ambition has consequences. He started a war against the Lee family and now he is facing the consequences of his actions. Family meeting. John has something to tell. Uh, Polly, you know what it's been like since Martha died. God takes the best first. Truth is... My kids have been running bloody rings around me. Oh, give them 10 bob some new shoes. Is that it, John? Tommy, we'd be better to do this without you. Once again, we see a weakness in introverted leadership. Thomas is sometimes too logical, too detached, prioritizing business above all else, being more logical than emotional. What the kids need is a mother. So that's why I'm getting married. He's, um, he's uh, Lizzie Stark. <laughs> John needs a wife and a new mother for his children, but the girl he chose is not a good fit. Tommy, I won't do it without your blessing, right? because I need someone. Right? The kids need someone. But nevertheless, the problem with his kids is important to John, so Thomas knows he has to deal with it in some way, because John is important to the family. The Lee family attacked the home of the Peaky Blinders and Finn, the youngest brother, nearly died as a casualty in the attack. Thomas realizes that he must end the war with the Lees quickly to ensure his family's safety. The art of leverage. Now we see how Thomas parley, Peaky family and the Lee family. Was I enough? So I'm beneath Daichi Koho Propinere. Radim Kachi Aliad. Can you ask Saltrades? You want to play a switch? We learn that Thomas plans to make a switch. This is a principle from Machiavelli's The Prince. It's really simple. Imagine you are the king of a country. Then, next to you, there's a smaller country and a bigger country. If you now ally with the bigger country against the smaller country, then first the bigger country will dominate the small country and then, eventually over time, the bigger country that doesn't need you anymore will dominate you. But if you instead ally with the smaller country against the bigger country, you can take over together the bigger country and share their territory. Instead of allying with Billy Kimba and giving him some more power, Thomas instead allies with the Lee family to take down Billy Kimba and share his territory, to leverage his family business to a new level of wealth. Thomas has a plan, but more on that later. The art of power. You think my campaign against Shelby has become personal? Correct. The agent is taking everything personal and making enemies with even his own people. Thomas is making new friends, while a agent does the opposite, making new enemies. Thomas and the agent are a mirror of each other, like Maximus and Commodus. I recommend watching the Gladiator movie analysis on this channel because there are so many parallels between Commodus and the agent. Both are immoral men, both are incompetent due to their Nazism and arrogance, both are using immoral methods and force power to get results and both play a powerful persona but are weak inside. On the other side, people like Maximus and Thomas have real power. They are defined by their virtues. Both are confident, both are intelligent, both are kind characters, both keep their word and both dare to take risks. And that's why both reach real results. The Shelby's really are doing an excellent job for us. We haven't lost a single penny to raffles or chalkers in eight race meetings. Sorry, we throw the dog a barn. Here we see Thomas getting the payoff for his work. Everything we saw in the previous episodes has led us to this moment. Gentlemen <coughs> and lady, the Shelby family has its first legal racetrack pitch. <laughs> The art of seduction. I'll confess, I need someone. Kimber has an advisor by the name of Roberts, runs the legal side of the business. Thomas is in love with Grace. Normally he can read people and see through them, but here he does not see that Grace is a spy because he's blinded by love. Rather than seeing that she's a spy, he wants her as head of his legal business. 
It was stuck at a place that aren't belong. For whatever reason, my good fortune. And perhaps my good. Thomas has a feeling that she's lying and hiding something, but his feelings for her are stronger. And for her, it's the same. Even though she's there to spy on him, she can't resist the feelings she feels for him. The universe has brought them together. Twin flames, or soulmates, how you want to call it. Made for each other. Thomas makes strong eye contact. Camera gets closer. Proximity between them gets closer. The tension is built. And... There's something else you should know. Very important detail about my reasons for employing you. Thomas reveals his love and makes the move smoothly and naturally, showing her that he likes her. Do you resign? No. My appetite for the work has only increased. And she shows him that she likes him too. The art of reading people. Thomas tests Lizzie. He wants to know her intentions and her loyalty towards John. Thomas uses money as bait so it's easier to read her. It's a similar strategy like in the third episode as Thomas used alcohol to read his opponents. He had something similar. He baits her with money to read her intentions. You mean one last time? One last time. You and me. Take bloody pounds. Thomas reading her, seeing her temptations. She takes the money and so fails the test, willing to cheat on John. In the heat of the moment, we see the true character of people. We see it on the example of Thomas, we see it on the example of the agent, and here we see it on the example of Lizzie. So the past is not the past. Sometimes as leader you have to make tough decisions. Not everybody will like you. But the question is, are you ready to make the sacrifice and follow your heart? Thomas is an empath and can relate with others. And here we see that this situation is hurting him, but he is ready to make the sacrifice to protect John. The art of seduction. Agent forces control by coming to her way too close, way too fast, pushing body contact and forcing control. Controlling behavior. That's not a word you'd use about Thomas. It's your word. The agent is jealous of Thomas because he is getting more attention than him. Jealous behavior. A cutthroat gangster with a secretary. The pretensions of these hoodlums are quite breathtaking, are they not? Yes, quite breathtaking. Agent has no respect for others. He puts himself above others, thinking he's better than everybody else. Narcissistic and arrogant behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, we see a perfect example of the nice guy syndrome. A nice guy is someone who pretends to be a nice guy, but we see clearly from his behavior that he is not a nice guy. Thomas in this example would be a bad boy, but he is in fact a real nice guy because of his good heart and humbleness. Thomas is attractive because of his virtues, and the agent is unattractive because of his corruption. I come here with good news and I get this. Grace. The agent is again rejected by woman, because he's projecting his insecurities to her. She has good news, but it's all about him, him, him. He is more interested in himself than in her good news. Not his looks, but his insecurities make him unattractive. The art of leadership. Thomas confronting John with the truth, telling him the bad news. Look, John, you're my brother. There's something I have to tell you. Yesterday, in the front seat of that car, I offered Lizzie some money. And John, she said yes. Now that's a fact. You do with it what you want. He seems cold and logical on the outside, but inside he's a kind character with good intentions, protecting John from making a bad decision, showing him something he doesn't want to see. Thomas has disliked at that moment because he's the messenger of bad news. This is again Machiavelli the prince. Don't be the messenger of bad news. But Thomas still does it because he's a kind character and he knows that it's the right thing to do. He is ready to sacrifice himself for the good of others, similar to Maximus who is ready to sacrifice himself for others. Now, later on, Thomas and John have a private moment. Thomas is now showing more emotion. I just want to be smoking that for same reason as you. Pain in the head. Their brotherhood and their experience in France make the bond between them especially strong. I spoke to Lizzie. I told her what you told me. You must think I'm an idiot. John opens himself. He feels weak and dumb. What would our granddad say? Hey? He'd be turning in his grave. Honest bloody money? Hey? In this house? Here? You always teach the two voices when we were kids. 
But Thomas motivates him. He cheers him up and opens himself too, sharing pain with him. Oh, we're not kids now, John. But we still have to look out for each other, right? Yeah. John now understands that Thomas only did it to protect him. They share the pain, similar in the last episode we saw how Thomas shares the pain with his fellow soldiers. This shows again that even though Thomas is sometimes too cold, when you need him, he is there for you and shares the pain with you. This is true loyalty. Thomas saved John and so won his trust. First he won Arthur's loyalty and now he won John's loyalty. Similar to Gladiator, Thomas is not making himself a leader. He earned the role of a leader. They chose him because of his actions and virtues. He was there when they needed him. The art of leverage. John, ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Have a drink. Now after Thomas has the trust and loyalty of John, he sends him on his first mission. Tommy, what you playing at? We're in shotgun range. John thinks they go to battle with the Lee family. John, before you go into battle, there's something you're gonna need. What's your bloody doing, Tommy? Smile, John. It's a wedding. Who's bloody wedding? Now if we told you, you wouldn't have come. But John's mission is not to go to war. Instead, John has to marry the girl from the Lee family to fuse both families. A girl who needs a husband, a man who needs a wife. This is again the art of leverage. The art of leverage is all about turning disadvantages into advantages and create opportunities. Thomas is at war with the Lee family and John needs a wife for his children. Two problems solved at once. This way Thomas solves John's problem and ends the war with the Lee family. War or peace. John is showing that he is a real soldier, embracing it with courage, sacrificing himself for the peace of all. Will he do? He'll do. <laughs> the wedding brings all the family members together, raising moral and loyalty in both families, celebrating love. This one man should be here. Good night, Paul. Freddie should be here. Ada's baby is coming and Thomas promises to Polly that Freddy is safe to come, showing Polly that he is a kind character. I think it's that lovely barmaid, that pretty barmaid that just walked out that's made our brother go all soft. Thomas smiles when Arthur talks about Grace. Even though he's sometimes cold and detached, he has a good heart underneath. Here they all enjoy together the small moments. You liar! Thomas won the loyalty of Arthur and John, but because they lost Freddy to the police, Thomas is now enemies with Polly. Polly thinks that Thomas spoke to the police and snitched on Freddy, but Thomas did not speak to the police. Grace did. There is an imposter among the Peaky Blinders. End. This episode shows a nice example of the art of leverage. Thomas again used his disadvantage to his advantage, solving two problems at once and leveraging so his situation. What I found especially interesting is the principle of Machiavelli's The Prince. Thomas decided to ally with the Lee family against Billy Kimber to make a switch. We also saw a perfect example of the nice guy syndrome. Similar to the third episode, attractiveness is less about looks, but more about the power and virtues you radiate. Overall, Thomas is a real leader because he is ready to sacrifice himself for the good of others. His good heart and his humbleness is what makes him a great leader and attractive to others. My name is Saint Simon and it's always a pleasure to have you here. I am excited to tune into the next episode, we are nearly reached the final of the first season. And we reach 1000 subscribers and 4k watch hours. I love you all, thank you for all the comments and support, all the money we are now making is reinvested into the channel to produce more and more high quality videos for you. Thank you and until next time.